the Strouds. Grassy Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to the episode of Packers Podcast where you don't I do Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom What Moon Grassy. And today we are going to be breaking down and predicting the AFC South. We did the AFC East yesterday. We did AFC the North before that, the NFC West before that. I was born in 1990 before that. Never mind, that's too far back. Well, if you haven't seen any of the other videos, what's going to happen here is I'm going to go through each team, talk about their offseason, and then we're going to predict their floor, how things could go if everything goes wrong, and their ceiling if everything goes right. Last year, yeah, the AFC South was uh, not too kind for me. I predicted that the Jaguars would finish in first place with a ceiling of 11-6 and six and a floor of 9-8. and eight. They finished in second with a 9-8 and eight record, so... I mean, I did get that part right. In second place, I had the Titans finishing with a 10 and 7 ceiling and a 6 and 11 floor. They finished in fourth place with a 6 and 11 record. I'm really good at the record predicting thing, just not the standings. In third place, I had the Colts, which turned out to be right. I had them have a ceiling of 9 and 8 and a floor of 7 and 10. They finished with a 9 and 8 record. And finally, I had the Texans. I didn't believe. I was a non-believer. I had their ceiling at 8-9, and nine, a floor of 6-11. and 11. They finished with a 10-7 and seven record, and the Strouds took over the league. And so, this year, what will happen? The Texans have all the hype. The Jaguars are still reeling from the absolute collapse that was last season. The Colts, maybe they'll be good, and the Titans are there. All this and more next time on Dragon Ball Z. Starting off with our first team, you got the Houston Texans otherwise known as the Strouds. The Texans, I think they surpassed just about everybody's expectations last year. Definitely surpassed mine. After taking a huge swing in the draft, trading up and getting back-to-back picks with C.J. Stroud and then Will Anderson, they have lit the league on fire. C.J. Stroud had a remarkable rookie season and looks to build upon that. And partially due to his efforts, the Texans have gone from a rebuild team to Super Bowl contenders in a season. Any better this morning? Any change? Change? Yeah, big change. And the Texans see this because they made a lot of offseason moves to try and make that team better. Their big trade, of course, getting Stephon Diggs. And I know that there's some worries with that. As we talked about with the AFC East video, Stephon Diggs at the end of last season really didn't look that great. But maybe a change of scenery will help. They talk about him in the locker room. But ultimately, if he can catch the football and he's another target for C.J. Stroud, I think it's going to be just fine. They lost guys like Cashman in free agency, but they also picked up guys like Daniil Hunter, Joe Mixon, who I hope has a resurgence, but I'm not too confident about that. They also re-signed Schultz, who was a major target for C.J. Stroud. And in the draft, they shored up that secondary a bit and also built up that offensive line. So the moves that they made, they are kind of in this win-now position. They have a QB with a rookie deal, and that, of course, has been the staple for quite some time in the NFL of winning championships. Unless you're the Chiefs, then you just do it willy-nilly. It's fine. Nobody's jealous. Last year for the Texans on offense, they ranked 13th in points per game, 22nd in rushing offense, and and 7th in passing offense. Over on the defensive side of the ball, they were 11th in points per game allowed. They had the 6th best rushing defense in the league and 23rd best passing defense. But taking a look at their schedule, the AFC South does not have the easiest road ahead of them, and also within their division, it could be a dogfight. They have to play teams outside their division like the Packers, the Jets, the Cowboys, the Chiefs, which is going to be a real, real good game, the Bills, the Lions, the Dolphins, the Ravens. All of these teams the Texans have to face are going to be tough games. And so I don't want to deflate any expectations, but I also think it's clear to set some because the Texans could have easily missed out on the playoffs last year, but they beat the Colts. The Jaguars failed in week 18. And so I don't want to squash any expectations, but I want to keep it somewhat realistic for the Texans because yes, they did have some good acquisitions in the off season, but we need to see CJ Stroud play for another year before crowning him anything. And on top of that, they have a pretty darn hard schedule. So 
if I'm going to be very pessimistic because of their schedule, and it is tough, I'm going to have them have a floor of eight and nine, which I think is still respectable. And their ceiling for me goes all the way up to 12 and five. I think the Texans could be a very, very good team this year. I think that's what a lot of people are expecting. I do expect them to be competing, if not win the division. But yeah, it's not going to be an easy road. And if CJ Stroud and the Texans can find a way to get a 12 and five record, they will have gone through a gauntlet and they will be more than ready for the playoffs. Then following that, you got the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, Jaguars. The Titans did it a couple seasons ago. They blew it. Then the Jaguars blew it. Who's going to blow it next in the AFC South? But it just seems like everybody's tossing Trevor Lawrence to the side because CJ Stroud is their new favorite. Will you marry me? Well, let me think about it. Yes. And I get it because this is a pivotal year for the Jaguars. They gave a big old extension to Trevor Lawrence in this offseason. And just the way that the season went down last year was so disappointing. Of course, they did have injuries. Trevor Lawrence was battling through a bunch of injuries by the end of that season. And I think the Jaguars are a good football team, but they were never able to put it together. I was really high on them last year. I was like, oh, Calvin Ridley's going to be that guy. And even though he put up some good stats, it just wasn't consistent. And that offense never really reached its full potential, which is crazy considering how much talent is on the offensive side of the ball. For the Jaguars last year, they were 14th in points per game on offense. They were 24th in rushing offense, which is super disappointing. They were 9th in passing offense. And over on the defensive side of the ball, they were 17th in points allowed per game, 9th in rushing defense, and 26th in passing defense. And in free agency, yes, they lost Calvin Ridley, but they're going to get Christian Kirk back, who I think is a major part of their offense. They went and got Armstead from the 49ers, which I absolutely love. They shirt up that defense a lot. Josh Allen is ready for another year. They went and got Gabe Davis. They got Mitch Morse, a center that they desperately needed. And in the draft, they shirt up on wide receiver again by getting Brian Thomas Jr. So I... I think the moves that they made in the offseason make a lot of sense. They didn't break the bank with Calvin Ridley and said they let him go to the Titans, which I think was the right move. And so heading into this season, the Jaguars, it's kind of now or never. I think there's still question marks on the coaching staff there. And if they fail to meet expectations, I wouldn't be surprised some people lose their jobs. So taking a look at their schedule, which again is not easy, not just within their own division, but outside of it, going against the Dolphins, the Eagles, the Lions, the Packers, the Browns, the Jets, it's going to be a tough time. So their floor, I actually have lower right now than the Texans at 6 and 11. Because until that coaching staff can prove to me that they can put it all together, I'm going to be a little weary. On the flip side, I have their ceiling up at 10 and 7. I really think the Jaguars are going to have a winning record, and I think that they're going to make it into the playoffs. But the lack of consistency is really starting to get to me. And Trevor Lawrence, like, I just want to see more from him. I think he's a very good quarterback. He's getting paid $55 million a year. And I hope that he's able to put the team on his back and they're just able to function. I think that potential is absolutely there. Will it be unlocked this season? We just have to wait and see. Following that, you got one of the biggest question mark teams with a ton of expectations, and that is the Indianapolis Colts. It's really crazy how the AFC South went from one of the worst divisions to one of the most exciting in football, and a lot of it is because of their young QB play. And Anthony Richardson, he is healthy and he is ready to take the league by storm. Or Gambit. You know how long I've been waiting for this? Woo, I'm about to make a name for myself here. Yeah. Storm wasn't in Deadpool, so I just wanted to be specific. But the Colts really didn't get to see a whole lot out of Anthony Richardson last year. He got hurt pretty early on in the season, and instead Gardner Minshew came in, and they were very close to going to the playoffs. And the Colts, especially on offense, were really solid last year, which is why I think Gardner Minshew is going to do pretty well in Vegas. They ranked 11th in points per game scored on offense. They were the 10th best rushing team, Jonathan Taylor. Contract disputes gone, coming back healthy, excited for that. And they were 20th in passing offense. Over on the defensive side, they were 20th. 28th in points allowed per game, which is a big old no-no. They were 24th in rushing defense and 16th in passing defense. So there's definitely room for improvement there. In the offseason, they re-signed just about everybody on their squad from last year. And in the draft, they went and got Latu, who's one of the best pass rushers from this past draft. They went and got Mitchell. They showed up that offensive line. And again, a healthy Anthony Richardson. Expectations are pretty high. Michael Pittman became that ride receiver that a lot of people have been waiting for last year. And I'm excited 
excited to see how this team does. I will not lie and say that there are huge question marks, though, because you have to worry about Anthony Richardson. Is he going to be that guy? Just because the sample size of what we've seen is way too small, right? We've seen more from C.J. Stroud, at least a full season's worth, and a lot more from Trevor Lawrence. So because of that, I don't have the floor of the Colts especially high. I have them actually right where the Jaguars are at 6-11. and 11. And again, this is just because of the uncertainty and their schedule. I do have their ceiling, however, the exact same as the Jaguars as well at 10-7. and 7. Because the Colts, if they put it all together and Anthony Richardson's that guy, I would not be surprised if they surpassed that 10-7 and 7 ceiling. But just because there's that uncertainty there and I just need to see more, I'm just going to pause a little bit on my expectations, pump the brakes a little bit, and we'll see if the Colts can knock some socks off because they have the potential to be really good. And finally, you got the Tennessee Titans. The Titans. Yeah, Titans fans are just really tired of hearing that they're going to have a crappy team every year. I'm sick and tired of scientists telling us mean, bad facts about our world in confusing ways. And around the league right now, especially in sports media, a lot of folks are really down on the Titans. And it makes sense, right? Because you look at all these other teams in the AFC South, and you're just like, yeah, this this looks like there's a lot of potential here. And then you have Will Levis, which besides an amazing cologne, again, you just haven't seen a ton out of. And I want to see more from Levis because what you saw from like that four touchdown game against the Falcons. However, that team was really held back by a god awful offensive line last year because it was abysmal. Looking at their stats, they were 27th in points per game scored, 17th in rushing offense, and 29th in passing offense. So pretty abysmal. Over on the defensive side of the ball, they were 16th in points allowed per game. They were the 13th best rushing defense and the 18th best passing defense. And their defense has never really been the problem. It's been about the offense. They went and got Hopkins this past offseason. They went and got Calvin Ridley. They, of course, lost Derrick Henry, who is now on the Baltimore Ravens. However, I'm really excited for Spears, and they even got Pollard there as well. They got Cushenberry, they got Awuzier, and in the draft, they got J.C. Latham, and they also got Swit. So also building in the trenches. And I don't think that there's anybody who's saying that the Titans aren't in rebuild mode right now. They got rid of Mike Vrabel. I love the coaching staff that they brought in. And again, just the investment in the offensive line. I'm not completely sold that they're going to be an awful team. And I want to be very clear. I don't think they're going to be making the playoffs. Playoffs? But I think the new coaching staff and with Will Levis behind a better offensive line and maybe the explosiveness of Spears and maybe DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley... This team could be better than some people expect. I love the moves that they made in the offseason. And while I have their floor all the way down at 5-12, and 12, I have their ceiling all the way up at 9-8. and eight. Like I said, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs or win the division or anything. But for people that are saying they're definitely going to be one of the worst teams in football, like a bottom three team... I just find that a little hard to believe. And I know for Titans fans, they'll be like, oh, geez, thanks, Tom. You're giving us a few more wins. And I get it. But the big thing here is figuring out if Will Levis is the guy. Because if he's not the guy, then you're going to need another quarterback in there to compete with the other quarterbacks in this division. So, yeah, the Titans, not really an exciting season I see from them, but could be a very competitive one and could also be the foundation on which they can build towards their future. So that is exciting. And for Titans fan sanity... Uh, I hope that's the case. So if things were to shape out like this, I had the Colts and Jaguars with the same ceiling, so I'm just going to have to choose a team, which is really difficult. But number one, I have the Texans finishing in first place. In second place, I am going to pick the Jaguars. I know, I know. Colts fans, you can be mad at me. I would not be surprised if they finished with the same record, but I'm going to have the Jags in second place. Third place will be the Colts, and fourth place would be the Titans. The uncertainty for me with Anthony Richardson is just a little bit too much. I believe a little bit more in Trevor Lawrence just because I've seen more of him. But yeah, I'm happy happy to be proven wrong, which I probably will be. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. You know, I saw me at TomGrassyComedy.com or TomGrassyComedy, all social media you see down below. A big shout and thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members for supporting this channel. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassy. And as always, go Pack Go. <laughs>